Welcome to the Rise Movement Podcast, a place where legends just like you learn how to raise your standards every day. I just feel like riffing. I don't know if I actually want to turn this into a podcast episode or whatnot, but I feel like I feel like diving into something. So like I'm going through a lot of shadow work at the moment, and the shadow work that I'm going through is quite confronting. It's I'm uprooting presuppositions, I'm going through old stories, old programs, paradigms, emotions. And it's, it's hard work. Like it's fucking exhausting every time I do it. However, this time something interesting is coming up and it's around the persona that I created around, you know, late 2016 to 2019 sort of thing when I was all like spiritual and shit like that. Still have the remnants behind me, the crystals and all that sort of shit. During that time, I had a lot of experiences that are challenging to be able to talk about. The experiences that I had were all consciousness related. Working through things like hypnosis, breath work. There's some other stuff that I want, don't want to talk about. It's not time to talk about. Things like sound healing, Reiki, energy work, um, different type, like different uh, philosophies and schools of meditation. Like I love this thing called Lucia Light Meditation. That is absolutely amazing. If you guys get the chance to be able to do that, go do it. Strongly advise. Very visual, very like DMT sort of experience. And then with the you know levels of hypnosis and thing that I've done, one of them, one modality of hypnosis stands out. And it's around past life regressions. So one of the universities in Virginia in the United States is pretty much inconclusively, inarguably, inconclusively, wrong word, conclusively, uh, inarguably found out that past lives are real. In reincarnation is real. Sure, we've had spiritual traditions for the last couple of thousand years say that this is basically a prison planet and that souls incarnate, incarnate into human bodies over and over. The experiences that I've had through hypnosis, through past life regression specifically, is profound. I don't know the number of lifetimes that I've lived. From what I can gather, it's in the thousands. From the awareness that I've been, from, God, this is going to sound wacky as shit, from like spiritual guides and, you know, mentors and things that are in that other realm of consciousness when you're in hypnosis and you've left the physical body behind and you're going venturing through different planes of awareness. I've been told thousands. I've experienced hundreds. And it's, it's hard to reconcile with. Like in this, you know, materialist reductionist worldview that we currently have surrounding us, boxing us all in. There's nothing inside of that paradigm for what I experienced. People can call it delusion. People can call it hallucination. Call it whatever you want to call it. Put whatever label you want to put to it. I know what I experienced and I have put other people through this experience. They say the same thing. With my shadow work a few weeks ago, I came up with this yearning because I noticed that there was like a somatic sensation in my body. It was like, I'm missing something. I'm missing somewhere, sometime, but I can't put my finger on it. Through past life regression, I went to another lifetime where I wasn't here on this earth. I was on a different planet. <laughs> Fuck, that sounds wacky. I was on a different planet The atmosphere was this beautiful, beautiful greenish hue. There's nothing around that I can point to that's green to be able to, no, that's too fluoro. Beautiful greenish hue. The earth that I was on, the planet that I was on, was like shades of like pastely pink. Everything was quite foggy. There was a very dense atmosphere, very humid. And that place was home for me. That's the place that I'm yearning for. And my unconscious is presenting me these things at the moment 
for God knows what realizations for what I don't, I don't even know what to do with this. Like how, how do you unpack that? You know, to, to go through what I'm experiencing through, you know, active imagination, self hypnosis, guided meditations, um, you know, like ecstatic dance, breath work, like all these things that I'm using as modalities to be able to help me venture into my unconscious and unpack stuff. Like it, it's very interesting, but like you don't, you don't have a place to be able to hold this in the materialist reductionist worldview. So how do you reconcile with it? Which is a really interesting conversation, really interesting conversation. I am exploring these things from a place of curiosity. I'm exploring these things from a place of non-judgment and thinking that's interesting. It's one of my favorite reframes to say, instead of polarizing yourself and saying things are good, bad, or indifferent, it's like, okay, well, that's interesting. Let's not put a story to it. Let's just see it for what it is and observe what comes up. And so the stories that I've you know, been trying to stay away from, they're really, they're really desirable. They're really alluring. They're really entertaining. And it's really hard to be able to connect, disconnect from those. The things like, you know, is this actually a prison planet? That's an interesting thing to contemplate. Is this a place where our energy is harnessed like the conspiracy theorists like to talk about? You know, this thing called Lush. <laughs> is all of this negativity that's around because we live on a pl prison planet that our energy is harvested? <laughs> wild to think about, wild to talk about. Makes you sound fucking crazy. Being in those other, you know, places, that place that I call home in that past life regression, a place that I yearn for that I don't even know if it's real. I don't know if this is a figment of my imagination. I don't know if this is a story. I don't, I don't know. There's no way to validate it. But I yearn for a place that's not here. And I posted about this already. I spoke about, you know, like how it feels insane that to miss a place that isn't earth, that isn't human, that isn't here. <laughs> and in that, I had a few people message me. It was really cool. I had some people message me and say, you need to do more introspection and intentional work, meditation, and also research, like go out there onto the internet and talk about, you know, type in things like starseed, starseed, S-T-A-R-S-E-E-D. And over the years, I've paid a lot of attention to this lady called Dolores Cannon. Dolores, she passed away in 2015, I think. She was a QHHT uh, hypnosis, past life regression therapist. She went all over the world with people that are, you know, abductees and abductees and have had altered states of consciousness, near death experiences and these sorts of things. And she's written, oh God, going on 20 books now. There's, uh, I think, a three-volume set of books called Conversations with Nostradamus. In her work, she talks about this splitting of the earth, where three waves of initiates of souls have come to the earth to be able to help raise the frequency and to wake the planet up. Doesn't that sound like some spiritual bullshit? And from these three waves of initiates, coming in to wake the planet up, to raise the vibration, to help the splitting of the earth into the 5D. <laughs> Fuck. And of those, there is a generation of star seeds. And the star seeds are souls not from this solar system. <laughs> Fucking hell. And she's had this same story, not from one person that she's interviewed, that she's put through hypnosis and taken into that trance space, into past lives and stuff like that. No, no. <laughs> She's done thousands of hypnosis sessions. And like I said, she's got, you know, 20 odd books. The stories are the same. She's interviewed and hypnotized people that have gone to the exact same places, the exact same times, the exact same states, the exact same energy, places, planets, like species. So if there's people with this in their unconscious, 
and there's star seeds and different, you know, initiates. And these stories are in fact true. What the fuck do we do about that? How, how do we sit with that in our worldview? And there's gonna be a lot of people that watch this or you know, watch the shorts or whatever I do with it that are gonna come into the stories, into the comments, and they've got their own story, their own worldview, and you know, maybe they've done some work, maybe they haven't done some work, maybe they know about the unconscious and the relationship that it has with our life and how it fucking governs everything, and that we're all tapped into the thing called the collective unconscious, and that's the collective unconscious of humans, and there's a collective unconscious of anything that has higher levels of thinking. There's probably a level of consciousness because consciousness just is, it's non-local, it just, it is everything permeating through energy it makes you wonder what would happen if this type of dialogue got out into society and it became commonplace it's like yeah of course we're not from here what, like what do you think a soul is why do you think we keep reincarnating in this place like i'm getting back to that i know that i've been native american a couple of times a few different tribes Lakota, like the Lakota tradition, like it means something to me. I don't know what to do with that. I have a memory of being with Rach. Rach was my wife in this lifetime as well. Who knows when it was? I have a memory of her birthday or something like that, or maybe it was our anniversary. I'm standing at a river, river edge and I've got a pelt of a wolf around my neck and it was like, you know, it was like my pup. It was, you know, it was my friend. And I'm doing a process. I'm not sure what I was doing. There's something medicinal happening. And then I see some leaves flying through the air and I get this awareness that it's Rach. She'd passed on, she passed on. She was an old grandmother that passed on. And I'm like an old man in, at this time. And I'm taking notice of, you know, that the energy of Rachel is with me. And I cry, I cry this, you know, heartfelt, just like remembrance of my partner. The same past life regression, hypnosis session. I. We go to another lifetime, and this one was rather recently. This one's maybe 1700s. Rach and I are together again, but we're very young. We're maybe 19, 20, somewhere around there. And we're married, she's my wife. We're touring around the French countryside in a very, you know, sort of like small town sort of thing, uh, somewhere near the mountains, and we're part of the circus. We're acrobats. Terrible storms happening. We have to go to the next place for you know the traveling circus and stuff like that. All of a sudden, the storm gets chaotic. Flood starts happening and we're crossing a bridge. And the wagon that I'm with is with Rach. The wagon I get out to be able to help the horses get over. And then a big flood of water, like a big rushing flood of water comes and takes the rest of the wagon and detaches from the horses. Rach is still inside of it. She manages to climb out and down further down the river, there's something she grabs a hold of, but I can't get to her in time. And I have to watch her be washed away and die. There's been other times that I've been with Rach. Many times, many, many times. Her and I are meant to be together. Like, we're inseparable. Like, that, that woman is just, I don't believe in soulmates, but fucking hell, she's been in a lot of my lifetimes, apparently. <laughs> Girls are fighting, very good. Hopefully they can resolve it. Where does this sit in our worldview? Like this is a lived experience for me. Like I've been through this many times. I've explored consciousness in so many different ways, shapes and forms. Like is this just, this just imagination? But it can't be imagination going back to the Dolores Cannon stuff because the moment that other people have the same lived experience through a, 
a process that is replicated over and over and over, not giving any other suggestions outside of relaxation. So if we can all get into that hypnotic state, into relaxation to the point where you can visualize yourself above your body in space, in, a, you know, in the ether, and then detach yourself from this current lifetime. And then because time is a construct and all time is happening at all dimensions and all levels and you know, all realities, and that means that time and consciousness are both non-local. It means that you know, it's as it's perceived sort of thing. So we say past life regression in this you know, 3D materialist reductionist world, but it could be simultaneously, it could be past, it could be present, it could be future, it could be, like, who knows, who knows? We don't have the language, we don't have the comprehension to be able to understand this at this level of consciousness where we're at as humans. You know, like, anything that I talk about here is gonna be fucking shit on by anyone who's a materialist, reductionist, atheist mind. They're gonna go, man, you fucking need help, you are hallucinating. But go back to the books, go back to Dolores Cannon, go back to every other ancient civilization. Like go back to the Dogen tribe. How do they know about the star systems? How do they know about the things like the Pleiades and how do they know, like, how do they know? Because all of their texts are saying that, yeah, we're, like we're basically like seed put on the fucking earth. How do we, racional, how do we rationalize with that in the current worldview? You can't. You know, ancient traditions talking about star people coming to the earth. <laughs> and people in hypnotic trance, again, all have the same story. All have, you know, like, this is a prison planet and we're stuck here. For some reason, louche. <laughs> Who knows? Like, how do you reconcile with that? You know, you just blindly accept it that this is a thing and then not have a place to be able to unpack it properly because that's essentially what I did when I was going through all this consciousness exploration. And then, you know, 2020 happened and it like really shut things down for me. I like stopped thinking so much up and out in terms of consciousness. And then I got really fixated in my body and, you know, really anxious. One thing that I'm lucky with, you know, my diagnosis of ADHD and autism and, you know, also getting prescribed cannabis for my anxiety, like, my anxiety is through the fucking roof. I'm constantly anxious. I'm constantly dysregulated inside of my nervous, uh, nervous system. Like I had a big meltdown on Tuesday night where I just couldn't regulate anymore. But then that like pressure release where I got to have this, you know, big vulnerable open, you know, like very volatile uh, emotional experience for myself, it regulated me and I got to be able to release it out of my body. And, you know, cannabis has been a massive help for me, massive help. The level of anxiety that I have whenever, because I only ha have my medicine at night, so I can't drive, you know, like I don't want to be that guy. And then so I have my medicine at night and then my anxiety decreases by 85, 80 to 90%. Like there's next to nothing inside. I can take a deep breath and I can feel like a somatic release through my body where it's like my mind isn't fucking up my nervous system. You know, the environment isn't uh, causing my body to go into fight, flight, freeze, fawn sort of thing. It's like, I can regulate, I can breathe, I can think a lot clearer, I can make a hell of a lot of connections. Like shadow work becomes easier, meditation becomes easier, hypnosis is just laughable at how easy it is when you can get into that space. And it's been a beautiful teacher, beautiful plant medicine. But then again, through the medicine of cannabis, going into meditations, I'm launched into different like psychoactive states. It like for myself, the way that my consciousness is set up and I don't know if this is just myself, you know, because I'm neurodivergent and other people that are, you know, ADHD, ASD sort of thing that have the same experience that I do. I don't know. Whenever I have my medicine, it's extremely psychoactive. It's like, I'm straight into, you know, like a holotropic DMT sort of space. Like, you know, the Alex Gray sort of art that, that stereotypical DMT space, like that's where I can get to with just cannabis. And not even a lot, like I'm a lightweight. I don't know, is that a neurotypical thing as well? Is it just an ADHD, ASD thing? I'm not sure. And you know, thinking from like a spiritual perspective when it comes to the recognition, but also the increase in ADHD, uh, ASD, yes, it's because we have more screening tools and you know, more um, psychiatrists, psychologists, people that can actually diagnose it sort of thing. And we've got TikTok and fucking Instagram and all these things that are people are talking about their lived experience and people are recognizing and going, oh my God, like I do these things. Like is, 
is the people that are the ramp up of ADHD and stuff like that, are they the star seeds? Like, are they that people? Is that the purpose of it? Who knows? But like, I just put my diary over there of all of these thoughts that I have had over the last couple of weeks of shadow work. I'm still yet to find an answer on this. I'm still yet to find an answer. And that's why I bring it to you guys. I promise you, I'm not crazy. I'm not suicidal. I have great mental health now. Like I had a meltdown the other day, but like I have great mental health now because I'm regulated. Life is purposeful, it's meaningful, deeply engaged, making, whoops, goodbye to that. I'm deeply, deeply engaged in my work, my family, my fiance, my jujitsu, like my friends, like things are fucking great. But how do you reconcile with what's going through my mind in my consciousness, in my experience? But not only my consciousness, every, like a lot of other people's as well. Like, how do you reconcile with that? So let me know what you guys think um, because a big part of my shadow work this time around is to stop wearing the mask of persona and to show up as I am, as authentically as I am. I keep saying, you know, out loud, the thing that I value more than anything is three things. It is authenticity. It is transparency and it is vulnerability. So if I can talk from this level of awareness, I shouldn't be wearing a mask, should I? Which is me taking off my mask and exposing myself that I haven't been showing up with those three in mind. I've been showing up as a fictitious version of these three. So now expect a lot more varied content from me. Whether it's the podcast, whether it's posts, whatever it is, I'm gonna show up as I am as authentically as I am with whatever's present. I feel like conversations like this where I'm just going through and unpacking stuff from my mind, I feel like that needs to be you know, shared and disseminated into the ether a little bit. I know other people have this experience because I had a big experience with one of my brothers the other day talking about exactly this topic because he's going through something very similar as well. So I know there's others out there that are doing what I'm doing, experiencing what I'm experiencing. Hell, maybe you're even from the same star system as I am. Fuck, that sounds dumb. But we're going to explore it together. We're going to explore it together. I'm going to talk into this sort of stuff more often. It's going to be interesting. I look forward to the comments because the comments I can imagine it's just going to be a fucking dumpster fire. And with that, we're out. Thank you for joining us, much love, take care. And thank you for sharing this around, liking, commenting, doing all the things. I really appreciate it, it definitely helps us out. We've grown pretty strong because the Rise Movement is, ooh, we're pretty, sh pretty much one year old now. Interesting how things happen. Hmm, anyway, see you guys. Thank you for being with me today. Thank you for subscribing and leaving a review. It really helps us out. Until next time, take care and much love.